Hello, Abnormal Family. Got another story for you. This one is another encounter I think that you're really going to enjoy. I had the pleasure of meeting with some new uh, creators tonight, and um, I think it's going to bring a lot more to the show. We had a, uh, a good meeting, and uh, it was four to five other creators that have now reached out to me, and um, I hope to be able to work with them. It sounds like we're going to have a good time. Let's get on to this encounter and thank you everyone for the support you're giving to Hunter. The description or the links are in the description if you would like to help. Hello, my name is Tyler. I live in a small town with my brother and the grandparents in southern Virginia, about an hour away from Richmond, Virginia's capital. Living in a rural area, you are bound to see or experience weird things, but this encounter happened to me while I was staying at my mom's house. My mom lives in a suburb in Richmond. Behind her house is about 30 or so acres of woods. I don't know who or if anyone owns it. This was during the summer break. My mom works as a nurse for an elderly lady, so she has to spend the night at work, Sunday through Wednesday. This happened on a Tuesday night. Everyone had gone to bed, so I decided to smoke some night. So I decided to have a smoke that night. It was a warm summer night. And I sat in the bottom of the back of the deck stairs and sat there and had my cigarette. For whatever reason, I looked up towards the wooded area. Standing just behind the chain link fence, I saw what appeared to be a figure hunched over. I couldn't tell if it was facing towards or away from me. I paused for a moment. At first I thought, surely, it's just an oddly shaped stump. But at that moment, I saw the figure stand up. Bear in mind, I hadn't even got my cigarette lit, as this figure interrupted me, so I was sitting absolutely still, holding my cigarette, looking at the figure. We both stood still for about two minutes. Finally, I decided to place my cigarette down, grab my phone, and open the flashlight app. I had no idea what to expect or what would happen afterwards. I really wish I hadn't. Standing there, was a thin gray creature a little shorter than me i'd say only about five feet it had eyes that reflected yellow before i could get a good look at it it bolted deeper into the woods i grabbed my things and i got back inside i made sure all the doors were locked before storing my things by that time it was 1 a.m so i decided to play battlefield harden on the big living room tv the living room had a huge bay window facing the backyard. They were closed when I came back inside and I didn't dare to open them. I must have fallen asleep as the next thing I remember was waking up to see it was 10.30 a.m. I was on the living room floor of the couch. I thought it was odd that no one had woken me up sooner as I was in the living room but I just assumed everyone had left for the day. There was only one other time I encountered that creature about two weeks later. I was in my room at about nine. I was watching Hulu or some such service when I glanced out my bedroom window, which also faced the backyard. I saw a shadow slowly creep across the yard. It caught my eye, and I immediately thought of the creature I had seen before. I quickly went into the living room to see if I could see it from the bay window. Sure enough, I saw the creature edge closer and closer to our next-door neighbor's yard. I motioned my mom's boyfriend over so he could see the creature. He gasped but didn't say a word. I saw a faint orange twinkle, which I can only assume was a distant streetlight reflecting on its eyes. It quickly scrambled over the wooden fence out of sight. We laid there, and we was waiting to see if it came back. Sure enough, at about 3 a.m. in the morning, the dogs start acting weird, and it comes back to the neighbor's fence. It starts dangling its long arm over the fence, abnormally long arm. And it was like shaking something. And the next thing I know, the neighbor's dog goes running out to the fence barking. And it snatches the dog and runs off into the woods. The next day we spoke to the neighbor and told them what we had seen, but they wouldn't believe what we had seen. They believed that somebody had to have stolen the dog. They wished they would have believed us so. Because when they searched the woods behind their house, they found their dog, or I should say what was left of it. The dog's head was stuck on a stick. Stuck into the ground. 
like it was looking at their house. Whatever had took the dog took the body and left the head on a stick. The neighbors believed that it was some honorary neighbor kids, but for me and my mom's boyfriend, we know what did this, and we don't dare go outside at night no more. This thing was hunting animals. Maybe that's why we see these things in the cities, because they can get easy meals off of the dogs and cats and other small animals. What do you think? I think they do come into town so that they can eat uh, easy things, cats, dogs, uh, dog food, scraps, things like that. So I think you're right on about that. And I don't blame you for not going back outside at night. I wouldn't go back outside at night if I witnessed something like that. And I believe whatever this is, it's pretty dangerous. Um, just keep your doors locked. It probably knows you're there and it's aware of you. And it's probably aware that you're aware of it. So um, I would be extra cautious. Make sure you keep everything locked up and um, keep your head on a swivel and don't be its next dinner in the woods. Thanks for watching guys and we'll see you on the next one.